Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to webinar number one for our databases and SQL video tutorial series. I'm starting a few minutes late because uh, out of the uh, sheer brilliance uh, I figured that I had, I would get or pick up a brand new puppy. Uh, so uh, some of you may be rolling your eyes, others might be uh, wondering what kind of puppy it is, but uh, yes, I got a puppy and uh, since I work from home, guess who the stay-at-home dad is now. So I get to uh, take care of an eight-week-old. It's called a uh, Frenchton, which is a French bulldog mixed with a Boston Terrier. I used to have a French bulldog, and uh, he unfortunately passed away a little while back, and I decided it's time to get a new dog. So we got a little girl. Her name is Lily. Anyway, she's uh, downstairs right now whining and crying because I thought I would time it well enough so that I could, uh, you know, get her tired right, you know, tuckered right out and have her put to sleep, um, or not have her put to sleep, but have her fall asleep and uh, have still have time to be able to do this webinar. In any case, I was late, um, but I'm starting things up now, and uh, no one has yet joined this webinar because I just sent the email out, but uh, I figure I might as well just jump right into the questions because, like I said, I've got a crying puppy downstairs, and you guys can watch this as a replay later. So if you join this video uh, after uh, I've already started talking, if you have any questions, you can post them in the chat box, which I will enable now. I realize I just haven't had it enabled just yet. Um, so now it should be enabled. You can post a message in the chat, and uh, hopefully I can answer those questions. But as you can see, hopefully see on the screen, I've got some questions that have come in uh, already, uh, mostly around getting things set up with respect to the, uh, the MySQL uh, command line. So uh, a, a few of you were having issues uh, with MySQL. So if I just go to the command line and, um, and let me start from scratch and clear the screen. So a lot of you were having difficulty actually getting in. So again, I'll show you what it is that I do to get in. I'll go to my program files directory because that's where I installed the actual program itself. And then I go to MySQL. And then I go to MySQL server. And then I go to the bin directory. Very important you go to the bin directory because that's where all the executable files are and that's where they all exist. Um, and then what I do here is, I don't know if you guys, a lot of you are having troubles connecting to the root uh, account. So uh, two things could be happening. One, maybe you did not install the root correctly. Um, I would recommend that you guys restart your computer. If you haven't done so yet, hopefully you have because it's been a little while, but if you're a little bit behind, uh, you can restart your computer and that might help uh, because maybe um, it's having issues connecting because the MySQL server, you, like you haven't uh, restarted your computer since you actually installed uh, MySQL server. So by all means, restart your computer and then give this a try. Um, so what I do is I type in MySQL. That's the executable file that you run to be able to connect to MySQL. There's a whole bunch of different executable files, so make sure you're running the right one, MySQL, and then you put slash or hyphen u, that's a minus sign with a u. Um, and also, if you were to be copy pasting uh, from somewhere else, may, it might cause issues copy pasting, so don't copy paste, just actually type this out yourself, because uh, I know that also can cause issues. So yes, type it all out, uh, hyphen u, type in your username, which for now I'll use the root, because uh, most people have the root as a username unless they've created a different user. Um, then you can do slash or hyphen p. Now that's all I'm going to type in to connect. I'm not going to actually type in my password here. Um, I'm wondering, and, and then when you you know hit it, hopefully you should say or be able to get the enter password field. You type in the valid password. Obviously, it's very important you type in the valid password, and then you should be able to get in. Okay, but a lot of people say that they're getting errors uh, where it's not allowing you to uh, connect via um, that connection string, the root at localhost, um, and I really, I, I don't exactly know why that's happening. Um, maybe you're typing in uh, the username root with uh, no space or something. I don't know if, the, if it allows that. No, it even allows that as well. You can put no spaces. Um, so maybe try that one as well. Try not putting a space after the U and just type in your username right away because maybe there's an issue there. Um, so yeah, I, I really don't know what it is that could be going wrong there. But I had one person email in and say that they have Windows 7. In, even after totally uninstalling it and deleting the previous version and everything, he still was getting the access denied error. Um, so, but he found that he had something called MySQL command line client. 
And when he clicked on it, it asked for the root password, and then he was able to get into the MySQL prompt. So, I mean, I have I have Windows 8, so it's a little bit more uh, clunky and annoying. Um, if I were to go and to uh, try and find um, that exact program, I could type in uh, MySQL command line client. So I'll type, I'll hit that. And as you can see, it, you know, it, it does allow you to just enter the password, so I can enter the password, and then I'm able to, to log in as well. So, I mean, if you uh, have that available in your start menu, um, you can click on start, and then you type in MySQL command, and it should be able to find command line client, okay? And you should be able to click on that. I have Windows 8, so it looks a little bit different. Um, but uh, in any case, you can give that a try if it's not, if you can't connect uh, the longer way. Okay, there's no difference here, so you should be able to use this just fine. So hopefully um, that uh, will be able to help you out. Oh, and there you go. Terry just logged in and says he found that this worked. He typed in MySQL-H localhost. So he typed, and let me just type it out for you. Um, he was able to type in MySQL-H, which is, I guess, specifying the actual host itself. He typed in localhost-u. He typed in the root and dash p for password. He typed in his password, and there you go. That connects as well. So many different things that you can try. Again, to recap, make sure you restart your computer after you install MySQL Server. Um, make sure you are typing in the correct commands, um, and and try every single one of those techniques and see if any of them work. If they still don't work, because uh, I know a few of you had issues with that, email me again, and I'll work with you one on one to make sure that you can get connected, because that's obviously an important factor, okay? Let me take a sip of water and I'll move on to the next question. Okay, so, uh, let's see. Um, okay, this one also came in from Terry. He asked, uh, from past exposure to databases, I seem to remember that there's, um, the things that you can do with a database uh, are not really uh, permanent until you do a commit. Uh, statement is that true of MySQL as well, or are there are the uh, commands made per, uh, permanent as soon as you run the SQL command? So just to sort of paraphrase that quickly, in some DBs you can do what's called a rollback. So you can roll back your transaction, which means that it doesn't actually happen. Nothing actually becomes permanent, like he says, um, inside of the database. So um, you can make any you can run any commands you like to make sure that they work and to see how many rows they will affect. Um, but it will roll back all the changes so they don't actually uh, become permanent in the database. So to do that, I just sort of made up a little uh, example here. Um, there's, this is slightly outside of the scope of, of the course because um, I, I'm not talking about transactional stuff just yet, but in any case, it's always good to be able to peek into the future because this is a fairly easy thing to do. Um, what you can do is, so first to answer the, the question, Terry, great question to ask. Um, the uh, first question, or to answer the question, um, this MySQL, uh, RDBMS, Relational Database Management System, will always automatically commit uh, anything that you do. So if you run an update command, a delete, or a, what is it, read, um, a create, so if you're inserting, updating, or deleting, it will commit right away. So the auto commit is essentially on. So it will immediately become permanent. Um, if you don't want to make it permanent, if you want to do something different, you can start a transaction. So that syntax is just start transaction. Okay, they don't have to be capitals here; it can be lowercase, I believe. Transaction, uh, but don't forget the semicolon. Okay, so that that indicates that your transaction has started. Now everything inside or everything after this start transaction will be inside of what's called a transactional context. So a transactional context means that it's not yet permanent. It can be made permanent if you want to, but it's not yet permanent. So what I'm doing is inside of the transactional context, I'm running an update statement where I'm, I'm, I have a, uh, what should we call it, a table uh, named transactions. Let me first do a select star from transactions. This is kind of a peek ahead into week two and three. We deal with uh, these things called transactions uh, in, the, in the form of a, or in the context of a bank transaction. So credits and debits, not transaction in the context of um, MySQL and databases. So a little bit of uh, cross culture going on here. So this transaction refers to the database world 
and this transactions relates to uh, a table in a database, but it's really reflective of, like I said, bank transactions, two very different worlds. Um, so I have credits and debits, so I have transaction types, C and D for credit and debits, amounts, which reflect the actual dollar amount of an individual transaction, and they're linked up to a bank account ID, and we have a date for each of them. So, okay, um, what we can do here is when we start a transaction, we start the transactional context. When I run this update statement as a part of this entire statement, um, it will roll back the transaction. So you see the keyword here is roll back. So it won't actually commit or make permanent the changes. So you see what I'm doing here is I'm saying update to the table transactions, set the transaction type to be C, where the transaction ID equals four. So transaction ID four is right here. It's the fourth row. And you see the transaction type for transaction ID four is D, which means it is a uh, debit transaction. Okay, but what I'm saying is set it equal to C. So change it from debit to be a credit where the transaction ID equals four. And just for safety, you don't have to put this, but just because I like to be a little bit anal retentive about my SQL statements, um, I'm putting in the previous value that it used to be um, just, uh, just so this is a nice rerunnable script. Again, you don't need to put this. I'm just, like I said, anal about it. So I'm, I'm specifying what the old value of it is and what the new value of it should be. So if I run this, select or start transaction, so I run all three lines. It's important to run all three lines of code to, for it to be properly in a transactional context. I run it, and now you didn't really see that very well. Let me clear my console and run it again. So you see it says one row affected and then zero rows affected, um, and execution, execution finished, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's see what happened. If I do a select star from transactions, you see here transaction ID 4 has not changed. It's still a debit transaction. And I can run this as many times as I like. I can keep hitting F5 and running it and running it and running it and running it. Um, and it's not going to do anything. I can go back and select, uh, do a select statement, and it's still a D, which is a um, debit transaction. Now I can change this to say commit. And now when I run all three of these lines together and go back and do a select, you see that transaction ID 4 has now changed to be a credit. So it's now a C. Okay, because now I'm committing the transaction. Okay, so now I'll just flip it back because I don't want to change my data. I'll flip it back and run it again with a commit statement. And I can go back and run the select. I can see that it's back to being normal, and there you go. So if you ever want to run something inside of a transactional context, that's what you do. Start transaction, and you type in either rollback or commit. Cool? Excellent. So good question. Next question is... Um, uh, one that he says maybe out of scope, but he says he's playing around with a select statement and was trying to see if there's a way that he could do something um, like a contains. So you can do a contains in programming languages. So he was wondering if, uh, if you could do that as part of uh, MySQL, which you absolutely can. He had messaged me later to say that he figured it out all on his own, so good for you. Uh, that's very good Googling. Uh, but just for the sake of everyone, I figured I would show you all so uh, let's go to question number two, which is this. So what you can do is if I go to a bank account, this is another table that I've created. It just has three bank accounts in it. It has a bank account ID as a primary key field and the bank account number, which is just a varchar, you know, probably, uh, what is it, 20 in length. There you go. So 20 length varchar. Um, so now how do I do like a, a contain statement? I want to say, I, I want to look for a bank account. I know it starts with these, you know, numbers or letters, or I know it ends with these numbers or letters or I know that it has this combination of numbers and letters in the middle, how do I find those bank accounts? So what you can do is you just put a like statement. Okay, this is your contains keyword, only they have the keyword like. And what you do is instead of using the wildcard character star or asterisk, what they use for some reason instead of the star is the percent sign. Okay, I don't know why they use a percent sign. A star, the wildcard character would have made a whole bunch more sense. But in any case, I didn't write the, the actual language, so um, we have to bow down to their syntax. So it's the, what I'm doing is I'm doing select star from bank account, where bank account number, which is the actual varchar character, is like A with a percent sign. So this is saying if it begins with A, okay? It's very important to note that this is just a begins with A statement. So I can run this, and sure enough, it returns the bank account number that begins with A. Now contrast that, if I were to do a percent sign at the start and none at the end, 
I believe this is saying find me a bank account number that ends with the letter A. Okay, because we're doing the wild card character wild card character in front of the letter and then no wild card character afterwards. So if I'm correct, there we go. I run it and it doesn't find anything because there are no bank accounts that end with the letter A. Instead, I'll look for bank accounts that end with the with the number eight. Okay, so I'll change this and say eight. And run this again, and sure enough, it finds two. Okay, so there we go. Or what we can do here is we can look for bank account numbers that have, uh, let's say, the number seven anywhere inside of it. So I'm going to put the wildcard character before and after the number. Okay, so that says if it, if the number seven is anywhere in the bank account number, let me know. So if I run that, sure enough, they all have the number seven in them. So you can do the same thing from number one. There we go. So apparently there's no number ones inside of bank account ID one. Okay, so let me just verify that and see that that's true. I scan through it quickly. I see that there's no number ones inside of bank account ID, uh, number one or ID one. So there you go. That's the like statement. And you can, I mean, you can use, uh, you know, you can put in a bunch of things if you want inside of here, not just one character. You can do multiple um, letters and numbers inside of the scope of a like statement. Okay, it's just like saying equal, only you're doing um, a more like a contains, just like uh, the uh, person who asked the question mentioned. Cool. So there you have it. Let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, oh, this is a great question. So how can, um, uh, it's funny, I think pretty much all the questions came in from one person must be, um, well, I won't name the person, um, but the one person must be doing really well. He must be really uh, well ahead of all the content. He's asking tons of questions. Um, so, you know, and then a lot of other people just had questions about how to install the MySQL um, server and command line and getting access to it, which is only like video three. So if you're behind in the videos, that's okay. Um, this week there's less videos to watch, so hopefully you can catch up. Um, or the other case is I'm teaching so well that you just have no questions. So hopefully that's also the case for most of you um, as well. But one gentleman has asked pretty much all the questions, which is fantastic. I love uh, that uh, they are so dedicated to this. Um, I wish all of you asked a whole bunch of questions. Sincerely, I wish, I, I wish you did because all I have is four questions to answer. Um, but in any case, next week... Uh, hopefully you guys can make up for that and ask me a whole bunch of questions. And even if they're from the from the first week's uh, questions or lectures, by all means, ask those questions as well. I'm perfectly fine with going back and answering questions about the first week's worth of stuff. In any case, let's wrap this up with the last question, which is a fantastic question because I didn't even know how to do this myself. Um, so I had to actually uh, do some research. So. The question is, how can we go back and look at the table definition itself, i.e. the data types that it's made of, if there's any keys, if there's any constraints, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how do we do that? Fantastic question. So again, I didn't even know how to do this. So the first thing that you can do is you can actually say show databases, databases, and don't forget your semicolon, and that'll show you all the databases that exist in your RDBMS. Fantastic. I didn't even know you could do that. Show databases is the keyword. Fantastic. So I'm going to say use my test DB because uh, I want to you know connect to that database. Then you can say show tables. Again, don't forget your semicolon. Okay, so now you can see the tables inside of that particular database that you just connected to. Okay, cool. And you can also go back and say show databases if you want to connect to a different database. Now you could say use and then choose another one. But show tables. Okay. Oh, don't forget your semicolon. So I want to check out the address table. What uh, is the address table made out of? So you can say show and create table. So it's almost like you're going to be creating a table with the keyword create table. This is how you would go about actually defining and, and bringing a table into existence. But instead, you put the keyword show in front of it and say create table and then tell it what table uh, you want to show. So I'm going to say address. Okay. Now what you're going to see is I'm going to type this in and you're going to see a bunch of um, crap essentially on the screen and I'll show you how to get rid of that crap <laughs> so almost perfect so you see there's a whole bunch of stuff going on it's like a lot of lines and stuff and then there's a the content in the middle which is the the actual meat and potatoes of what you want but to get rid of all this crazy stuff you can type in uh, slash G okay slash G with a capital G oops sorry I don't think you need the uh, semicolon now there we go so again let me show you you do show table or show create table, you type in the name of the table, you type in slash, 
capital G, and you actually don't need your semicolon because uh, you're telling it that you're done and you want it to do something. So slash G will actually get rid of all that stuff and just print it out vertically. So now you can see the actual table. This is, this is the actual query that you would run to create this table. So you'll see any constraints. So you can see in here we have a constraint called user address foreign key. It's a foreign key. It references a different table, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and you see all of the uh, pertinent fields uh, that go along with this particular table, as well as which one the primary key is. So you see primary key is address ID, um, and uh, and so on and so forth. The one thing you could probably ignore is at the very end, it tells you which engine it's using. Um, and the character set. So this is just this is more advanced stuff that you don't really need to get into until you're actually you know integrating your database into an actual uh, application, so or a piece of software. So don't worry about that last part, but just worry about you know the actual stuff that you're already familiar with, like the fact that this table has uh, all these columns: address ID, street address, city, region, region code, country, user ID, um, and it tells you all the different um, character types, all the data types. And, uh, and the constraints as well. So, fantastic question. Um, and let's see, Owen oh, Terry saying something. This also works. Show columns from users. Oh, interesting. Show columns from, let's say, address. Oh, there you go. That's a nice way to see it as well. So, now, I don't know. Does this show the actual constraints? It shows if it's nullable. It does show the key, so it shows some constraints, but it doesn't really get into detail about what the exact kind of constraint is. So MUL, who knows what that means? Maybe there's multiple keys or multiple constraints on this particular um, uh, value, on this particular column. So this, this uh, which we call it up here, this command up here will show you a bit more um, uh, of the nitty gritty with respect to what's going on behind the scenes. But if this is exactly what you're looking for, this is much easier to, to read and to understand. So cool, excellent. I think that's all the questions that I have had that came in. Um, yes, indeed. So I guess what I can do, I'm, I can wrap up this, uh, this particular session and I will uh, urge you all to, be, uh, to actually go ahead and, and see, watch as many of the videos as you can, write down all the questions um, that you possibly can at, you know, as you're going through the videos, um, but wait until the end of the videos that you've watched to actually send in the questions because maybe I will have answered them um, and uh, you know, that would be a bit of a waste of time then. But um, send me the questions at the end of the videos and uh, I will gladly put them into the queue and, uh, and throw them on to the next webinar which we're going to be doing next Thursday at 2 p.m. Hopefully if all goes well, it'll be 2 p.m. Eastern time on the dot. Uh, if the puppy, the new puppy, isn't uh, giving me any issues. Um, but for now, I will bow out and uh, and say thank you very much for, for watching. Thank you very much for uh, joining up and, and going through all these these um, lessons. I look forward to seeing you this week. And this week's questions, or should I say next week, uh, seeing you next week. This week's questions are posted now. You can go and check them out. They are uh, live via, let me just bring a new screen up here. Oh boy, go to dbvideotutorials.com. I will log in and you can see module two is now posted. So you can go through module two, learn about relationships. Normalization is a very tough concept. You might need to watch this video a few times to really get the hang of it. Um, and, uh, and then the relationship stuff. If you haven't already learned about relationships, this is very, very critical stuff to understand. And then we'll get into actual tools that you can use to make your life a lot easier uh, with dealing with, with uh, databases. If you're tired of using the MySQL command line, you can probably skip ahead and watch the tools video uh, right now, and that will give you a good tool for actually being able to interact with databases. Um, but if you like the command line utility and it's still working for you, then don't worry about it. You don't need to see tools just yet. All right. And don't forget, assignment one is also posted. So you can go to assignments, click on assignment one, and you can actually just click and download assignment one here, which is a PDF document. And you can actually go and put all the things that you just learned to, uh, to work and uh, hopefully be able to answer all of the uh, assignment questions there. So cool. Again, looking ahead, this week to come, we have Module 2 for you to go through, as well as Assignment 2 will be posted next Wednesday, next week Wednesday, and obviously the next Q&A webinar uh, will be next week on Thursday at 2 p.m., and you'll be able to see the link here, and hopefully I'll be able to email you the link uh, a little bit sooner than we did this time. All right? 
So take care of yourselves. Uh, thank you very much again for going through this and, and uh, sticking with me and, and learning from me. I really love it. And please, please, please ask me all the questions that you possibly can. I'm more than happy to answer them. So until next time, guys, peace out. Bye for now.